bleeding purple and gold from the heart of Los Angeles. This is the LakersNation.com podcast with your host, Trevor Lane. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's show. As always, we are powered by CLNS Media and LakersNation.com, your one-stop shop for all things Lakers. Today's show is brought to you by Hims. Go to 4 slash Lakers to get a one-month trial for just $5. Solve your hair loss problem right now. Well, the NBA playoffs are in full swing right now. LeBron James is making ridiculous shots. It's looking like they're going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals, and certainly we're probably going to have a, a Golden State Warriors versus Houston Rockets Western Conference Finals, which I can't wait for. But you know what? We need to focus on the Los Angeles Lakers, who are not in the playoffs right now, but there's still plenty of things going on for us to discuss. So, I've brought in Hannah Kulik, but before we even get to basketball stuff, there's one other thing that we got to talk about. First things first, huge congratulations to Hannah for graduating college. Thank you so much. I know. I can't believe it. We're finally done with school. I don't even know what to do with myself anymore. Now, did you, we were recording this Sunday night. Did you like officially graduate was it yesterday or was it today? Yeah, I officially graduated yesterday morning, bright and early. I was actually at my school at 7.30 and waited around for about two hours because they told me I had to be there by 8. But of course, you totally did not have to be there by 8. So yeah, it was from like 9 to 12. It was hot. It was a little long, but it was really fun. So it's all, um, I can't actually believe it. I still feel like it hasn't really set in yet, but it's definitely a really big accomplishment and I'm really, really excited for the future. So at this point, you've had like 36 hours or so as a college graduate officially. How does it feel? You know what? It feels pretty darn good. I'm not going to lie. I still honestly, like I've said, I don't really feel like it's sunken in yet. I still feel like I have to go and like, you know, be rushed because I have to go write a really quick paper. or I have to study for my test. Normally I would have school tomorrow. I'm like, oh, I've got to study for a test. And I'm like, wait, I don't have to study anymore. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just means you have more time to focus on the Lakers. Exactly. Perfect. So um, let's uh, speak of the Lakers. You mentioned this. I think it was yesterday. Hannah, you were, you were texting me, and I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was something to the effect of, if we have to talk any more about LeBron James and Paul George, I'm going to die. Can, <laughs> can, we, can we give a little context to that? Like, what's, what's bringing on those feelings? Oh, my goodness, Trevor. I'm actually not joking. I, I've actually made an announcement to my family before I just had a barbecue. I just came from my like uh, one of my graduation celebrations. It was a little barbecue with my family, and I actually said to them, I said, listen, I know you guys are all going to want to talk to me about the Lakers. We cannot talk about Paul George and LeBron James. I will literally scream because I just feel like we have all talked about it. I've written articles about it. Anytime someone sees me around at school or out and about, it's just the first thing they ask me. And I just feel like I just keep repeating myself, repeating myself. So I'm just going to get it out of the way right now. If Paul George comes to the Lakers, great. I would welcome him with open arms. If LeBron James comes to the Lakers, maybe, in, you know, I, I have a little bit of a bias against him. I'm a little bit salty towards him, but if he comes, you know what? He's LeBron James. He's the best player in the world. We're seeing what he's doing with the Cavs right now. It's unbelievable. I'll still be happy. And you know what? If they don't come, we'll survive too. We've got a great young team and I'm really excited for them. And I, I really want to be able to keep all of them as much as possible and really see them develop because I think we have something really special going on. So either way, I am totally fine and happy, but man, I just can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> well, we do have a little ways until free agency starts. That begins July I 1st. I mean, so you can expect a decent amount of Paul George and LeBron James rumors between now and then. And part of it is because this year, this is the first time in a number of years that the Lakers haven't been having to watch ping pong balls to figure out whether or not they're going to be able to keep their draft pick. I mean, right, we were we were all panicking at this time last year, looking at the draft lottery odds and keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that the Lakers would somehow manage to keep their pick. This year it's gone. There's nothing they can do. The only thing we can hope for is that the pick doesn't wind up jumping up and giving Philadelphia or Boston an insanely good pick at the top of this draft because I mean that would be awful but the odds against that are are pretty strong I mean most likely they're going to end up sending like the 10th pick to Philly so that we don't really have that to talk about right now we're not fully into like draft prep stuff just yet although that is starting to pop up so of course everybody's talking about LeBron James and Paul George but I get it and and yeah we're gonna try I can't make any promises here, Hannah, but we're going to try to keep this show LeBron and Paul George free, at least for this episode. 
Okay, let's try to do our best. I know we asked some questions, and I'm sure those are going to be in some of the questions. So we'll do our best. I'll I'll keep it together for this episode. But then after that, we're done, guys. Well, I think a lot of the questions too, like worked around them. Like here, let's just jump into it. This, by the way, guys, this whole show is going to be a mailbag show. You guys sent in questions, and and we're going to be answering them. So we've got plenty to go through. The first one is uh, this is from Twitter at ac steezy ninety nine said all the talk will be centered on PG-13 and LeBron, but who should the Lakers look at getting if they don't get those two guys? So there, I mean, it mentioned those two guys, but he's really not asking about them. He's asking, hey, what's what's plan B? Where do we go from, from here? So what's your take, Hannah? Okay, well, if we don't get, besides Paul George and LeBron James, what the Lakers really need is they need a center and they need shooters and they need some sort of a backup point guard. So, I mean, I guess we can just take a look at seeing some of the free agency names in terms of centers. We have, you know, Nerlens Noel. We have Jaleel Okafor, Cousins. Uh, Nerlens Noel and Jaleel Okafor don't really work, especially because if we do re-sign Julius Randle, we're going to need centers that are able to space the floor, and that's just not really their forte. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins is a player I'm definitely interested in, but of course, he has that Achilles injury, so we're going to have to make sure he's healthy. Um, besides some other players, let me just take a look at the list here. I mean, there isn't too many on the mark. We can look at maybe, you know, guys that we might be able to swing in and get like Rodney Hood, possibly Rudy Gay, maybe Wilson Chandler. There are a few names here, but I think um, in order to answer, you know, this question, if we don't get Paul George and LeBron James, I think we're just going to look to sign a bunch of guys on these big one-year deals. Maybe we'll look to try to bring Isaiah Thomas back on a big one-year deal, Brooke Lopez on a big one-year deal, and then try again next summer. Yeah, I mean, hey, DeMarcus Cousins, he, he scares me with that Achilles injury. Lakers yeah. fans know too well what it's like dealing with an Achilles injury after what uh, what they went through with Kobe Bryant. But DeMarcus, it's an, it's an interesting situation because i got to wonder, given how well New Orleans did in the playoffs, I'm, I'm speaking like they're, they're out already, which they're not. As of, this, as of this moment, they are still in, but the Golden State Warriors will be sending them out pretty soon here. Um, how well they did without Cousins. They played better without him than they did with him, using Anthony Davis, giving him a little bit more room to, to operate in there. And part of that is just Anthony Davis is ridiculous. But with how well they did without Cousins, like are they going to fight that hard to keep him if the Lakers or some other team comes at him with a big offer? I don't know. I mean, I think the ideal for the Pelicans would be to, to give him an offer, and then if it doesn't work, then you can trade him for something rather than lose him for nothing. That was what I was hoping the Lakers would do with Dwight Howard back in, uh, was it 2012? But... You know what? I'm still nervous about the whole Achilles thing, so I don't know if he'd be the guy I would go after. But there's some other targets. Maybe you just go after Brooke Lopez. Maybe you go after Isaiah Thomas. But here's one that popped into my head that not a lot of people have talked about. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but just hear me out for a second. And the name I'm going to throw out there is Aaron Gordon. Now he's Oh, a that's interesting. He's a restricted free agent for the Orlando Magic, right? He plays the same position as Julius Randle. I don't know if you can play the two of them together all that much. You've already got Kyle Kuzma. You've got a lot of duplication there. But doesn't that guy do exactly what the Lakers want to do? They want to defend like crazy. They want to be able to shoot from the perimeter. And they want to get out and run. And I think Aaron Gordon can do all three of those things and do it at a very high level. And so I think he would be an interesting addition. But, hey, you're going to have to overpay him by a ton and then pray that Orlando doesn't match. I mean, I'm not saying he's option 1A or 1B or or anywhere down the line, but I think it would be an interesting fit if they found some way to get their hands on Yeah, no, I love Aaron Gordon. That's an interesting fit. I don't know if it's necessarily going to work like you just said, but if if it's a possibility, you definitely have to consider it if you're the Lakers. Yeah, I mean, hey, like I said, he's he's restricted, so it's it's probably not going to happen. I, I doubt that it happens. But you know what? The dude shot 34% from, from three last year. The Lakers need three-point shooters. I could see that moving up even further from there. He's athletic as all get out. I'd love to see some long Lonzo outlet passes to Aaron Gordon for some monster dunks. So that would be an exciting addition. And, you know, hey, it would throw the whole NBA for a, a major curve if the Lakers switched gears and went after Aaron Gordon. Um, anyway, Hannah, you want to move on to the, the next one? Okay, yes. The next question is from at MambaX24. Oh, I recognize this name from Twitter. He tweets me all the time. And he said, uh, two 
me uh, at Hannah Kulik. Congrats. Thank you very much. And they said, do you think Randall is going to resign? And what is the next plan if Paul George decides to go somewhere else? And also, please send me some of your delicious pasta. <laughs> okay, so I, I think we don't need to talk about the what is the next plan part because we kind of just did that. Um, do we think Randall is going to resign? Uh, resign, I should say. So the whole issue with Randall, obviously, he's a restricted free agent. I Here's the thing. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if Randall wants to resign or not because unless he wants to take the qualifying offer, the ball isn't in his court. He doesn't get to make that decision. The Lakers get to make that decision. If Randall Randall can sign with Randall could sign with whoever, he could he could sign with the Dallas Mavericks and the Lakers can decide to opt to match that and then he's fine. So it's not so much Randall deciding whether or not he wants to resign. It's the Lakers deciding whether or not they want to match an, any offer that's given to him or work out some sort of a deal if Randall isn't able to find another offer. So I would like to think that Randall does wind up sticking around just based on, on how well he played this last season. I think he's part of the young core and he's a guy that you've got to have. But um, but yeah, that's it's it's really out of his hands because that's just how restricted free agency works. And, and you know, more important though is that pasta part. I mean, I think that I think next season you've got to make it a goal, Hannah, of eighty-two games of pasta because then we will see an eighty-two and zero season, right? Oh my goodness! I know I'm actually on a little pasta cleanse. I have not had it once since the season is over, so I'm getting I'm completely cleansing my palate so that next season I'm ready to go for pasta every single game night. And then the Lakers will 100% make the playoffs. And then they'll 100% win the championship, and then it'll be great. So we'll save some for summer league too, so we can give Alex Caruso a little boost in Las Vegas oh, this yeah. summer. I'm assuming okay. he's going, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, I will say. All right, I won't have any until the summer league because Alex Cruz, so he needs some help. So I'll give him. I'll give him some of my pasta. Perfect. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break to talk a little bit about hair loss. Did you guys know that sixty six percent of men start to lose their hair by age thirty five? But the problem is, by the time you start to notice hair loss, it's already too late because it is way easier to keep the hair that you have than replace hair that you've lost. So if you're seeing your hairline slowly start to move backwards or have bald spots pop up, it is time to do something about it right now. The solution to this problem is 4 They are a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, baldness can now be optional, and Hims connects you with real doctors with medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. They use well-known generic equivalents to name-brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. There's no snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. These are prescription solutions backed by science. No waiting room, no awkward doctor's visits. You save a lot of time by going to 4 It's super easy. You just answer a few quick, quick questions. Your doctor will review and can prescribe you. Products are shipped directly to your door. So order now. My listeners get a trial month of hymns for just $5 right now while supplies last. See their website for the full details. This would cost you hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Go to 4 slash Lakers. Again, 4 slash Lakers to get that trial month for just $5. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash Lakers. All right, 4 slash Lakers. Go check it out. You won't regret it. Okay, so do you want to move on to the next question? Yeah, why don't, why okay. don't we? Let's see. The here. next question, do you want to ask it? Yeah, I'll go ahead and ask okay. it. We've got uh, Leandro Pascasio says, um, should Magic Johnson focus more on developing the young core instead of the free agents? Should we trade the first round pick along with Dang? So interesting kind of conceptually, what do we want to do? Do we want to focus on building up the young guys or do we want to try to get win now pieces in free agency? What, what do you think? Okay, well, this is actually a very interesting question. I actually just wrote an article. It has not been posted yet, so hopefully I don't get in trouble, but I think it'll be totally fine. I compared the Lakers to the Minnesota Timberwolves in that saying, I think the Lakers can learn something from the Minnesota Timberwolves. In that saying, I don't know if it was necessarily worth it for Minnesota to trade Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, and their draft pick um, to get Jimmy Butler. And then, of course, they also traded uh, Lori Markinen, too, I think, with that. I don't think 
it was worth it for them. And when we saw them, they had, yes, they had a better season this year, but they barely made the eighth spot. And then, of course, they got out in the first round of the playoffs. And in terms of for the Lakers, it makes me really nervous to think of, I know they're just talking about free agency in that, in this question, but I'm thinking of, you know, the trade for a player like Kawhi Leonard or just to trade our players in general to try to get someone. It makes me really nervous to try to pl- to try to trade our young guys for a player that may may come in and maybe he'll make a little bit of an of an impact but in the long run I don't know if it'll necessarily be the right thing so I am nervous about trading any of our young players I think it's really important that we are able to develop our young core like I've said previously I'm really excited about this this young team I think we have so much talent and I think our future is so so bright so I think developing the young core really needs to be the Lakers priority and then in terms of should we trade the first round pick along with Dang I don't think teams are just going to take Dang in the first round pick. I think it's going to cost us, you know, we've got to have to throw in Ingram or we're going to have to throw in Kuzma or something like that. And I don't think that would be just the Lakers should not do that. So I think we're just going to have to ride it out with Dang and just keep paying him for now. Agreed. And and I think unless a team is willing to take a a big uh, discount or or take not much, I should say, not much of a return in exchange for taking on Dang, I think you have to wait until you know whether or not Paul George is coming or LeBron James is coming because if you don't need that cap space, if you don't need the the space for the two max slots, then there goes your incentive to give up assets to move Dang. You might as well keep that pick for yourself and let let Jesse Buss see what he can do with the uh, the scouting staff and see if they can unearth another Kyle Kuzma late in the first round. So so yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that that first round pick is enough, like you said, Hannah, but. At the same time, I think the Lakers wind up making that selection unless they have some other deal on the table or something because, well, if they don't, if the Lakers wind up trading that pick with Dang, I think it's a pretty good sign that they've gotten word that, hey, somebody's coming, right? So if you see that happen on draft night, then it's a decent sign the Lakers have something in the works with one of these guys, even though they shouldn't because they, they, don't, they can't communicate with the free agents until July 1st. But who knows, Magic Johnson may be winking at somebody and uh, have something in, in the works. Um, the other part of that, developing the young core instead of free, I don't think it's instead of free agents. I think you, you do both. I think you have to find a way to find a, a good balance. I mean, look at what the San Antonio Spurs have done. They've consistently drafted young players that have come up and, and kept them relevant. Obviously, they've got some issues with Kawhi Leonard right now, but they've done really well in the draft. And at the same time, they've managed to, to compete in the here and now. So I think that's the, that's the model. You want to be able to try to do both. Pick which young pieces are going to be your, your future foundation, your core, and you keep those ones. You get rid of, of who isn't, and you try to, in the meantime, land pieces that are going to help you win now. So you try to do both. Try to win now and build for the future. Much, much, much easier said than done, but I think that's where you go. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this next question is from at, oh, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, at Moto Gretzky. And he asked, what is the second biggest topic for the Lakers this postseason outside of signing max players? Okay, so I love this question because it gets us away from LeBron James and Paul George. And yes. <laughs> it's, I mean, what is, what's next? What's the next most important thing? And I, you know, I think, okay, is it the draft? Is it, is it trades? Is any of that stuff? I think the next most important thing is the development of Brandon Ingram. I really do. And I want to say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to say Lonzo Ball because he's got a lot of little things to work on with his game. But I keep going back to that stretch when Lonzo was out and Brandon Ingram took over the point guard spot and he put up, he put up what? It was just over 18, five and five, five assists and five boards per game with great shooting efficiency. I mean, he was he was had a high usage rate, but he was still scoring at a, at a high rate and doing a really great job of setting up teammates. I think we saw flashes of superstar potential there with Brandon Ingram. So his development this summer is going to be critical because I think out of all the Lakers youngsters, he's the guy who could really make the leap and become a star. So I think that's going to be the most important thing outside of signing, say, a LeBron James or a Paul George is how Brandon Ingram develops. Okay, I'm going to agree with you in terms that I think the biggest thing outside of signing a big max player is for the Lakers to really make sure that these young guys are getting bigger, they're getting stronger. Obviously, Brandon Ingram's a part of that, but I need all of them. I need Lonzo Ball to step up because 
As Magic Johnson told Lonzo during his exit interview, this is the most important offseason for him. We have to see him step up his offensive game. He's going to have to get stronger. So all of these guys are going to need to be in the gym working day in and day out. They're going to be needing to lift weights so that they're able to get bigger. They're able to compete with these bigger guys when they get down in the middle. They're going to have to get tougher. They're going to have to get faster. So we've got to continue to develop these young guys, and it's going to really be important for all of them. Obviously, Ingram included, but I think every single one of them has to really really be working this summer yeah no doubt no doubt they all have to put in quite a bit of work but um yeah hopefully it ends up being a busy summer i saw that kyle kuzma is already getting ready to work out so hopefully yes i good saw things. that yep kyle kuzma is always ready to go <laughs> all right um next one i picked this one just because of this guy's location uh clayton demarkey uh, says with what are two max deals Ingram is expected to be a good role player or has a chance or does he have a chance to be a protagonist meaning is he going to be like the main guy um, he said always listening to you guys here from Brazil where the Lakers are the most popular team see I love that because the Lakers everybody looks at the Lakers as oh it's just California or LA or whatever no the Lakers are the most popular team in the NBA if you look across the country anywhere that there is not a, a major fan base of uh, you know an already built in team. So outside of Dallas, you know you have a cluster of Dallas Mavericks fans right there. But if you look in the space between, so the space between Phoenix and Dallas, that empty space there, you see a lot of Lakers fans in there. If you've ever seen any of those maps that kind of color code everything, there are Lakers fans everywhere and it's not even just the united states it's around the world we have a huge follow following in the philippines great to hear from somebody from brazil so very very cool that the lakers have this kind of worldwide following anyway what do you think hannah is is ingram i guess we should look at this should could ingram be kind of that nice role player that third third piece along with a pair of superstars or is he more of like the guy is he the guy you build around let's look at it that way Okay, well, I think it just depends on who we sign. If we sign LeBron James, it's LeBron James's team and Brandon Ingram takes a backseat because that's just, it is what it is. If you bring a guy in like LeBron James, it's going to be his team and everyone else is just going to have to take a backseat. And that's kind of why I'm a little bit nervous to bring in LeBron James because I don't want these young guys to have to, you know, kind of take that backseat to him. I want them to be our main guys. I want them to continue to develop. And I think anytime you bring in a superstar, I think one of the negative things is that it might, you know, force them to, you know, not maybe develop as much. We've seen that with other teams and some other young guys as well. Um, but in terms of Brand Ingram being the protagonist, I mean, that's why I think Paul George fits in so well because we just slide him right up in there for KCP. And then I don't think Brandon Ingram loses that role. I don't think it hinders his development or any of the young guys' development. If it's a guy like LeBron James, I think it's a little bit of a different story. What do you think, Trevor? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that the beauty of Ingram's game is that he can be so many different things. He can be a point guard. He can be on the wing. He can, he can be the type of defender that you want him to be, especially with those long limbs. I think eventually he's going to grow in that way. I think he he can put on a lot of different hats and so if you if you want to make him the guy I think he can go that route and he can do it but he can also be a really nice complimentary piece so so yeah um Brandon Ingram I think he can do a little bit of everything here um let's uh let's jump on to the next one okay the next question is oh this is actually kind of directed right to you Trevor it's from at prince underscore fms and he asks I don't think it's too early in his tenure for this question so I'll thank you for not shunning me Trevor if Luke Walton doesn't make the postseason next year is his job in jeopardy uh I think this guy has to be shunned yeah (laughs) no um okay so if the Lakers don't make the playoffs next year is Luke Walton's job in jeopardy um no I don't think so. I don't think it is. I'm assuming if they don't make the playoffs next year, that means they didn't land LeBron James. They didn't land Paul George. They didn't get the stars that they were looking for. They still have a young team. The West is a a major, major dogfight. I mean, there's some really strong teams. We saw some good teams like the Denver Nuggets not get in this season. And look at what Luke Walton has done. Look at this season. The Lakers were dead last in defensive rating the season before. And this season, the Lakers finished, I looked it up right now just to make sure I had it, the Lakers finished 12th in defensive rating. This season, they finished third by a hair in pace. They were first in pace for almost the entire season. And then once Lonzo got hurt and Ingram got hurt and then we had all these injuries, the Lakers slowed down a little bit. So they just barely finished third in pace. They were right there with the Phoenix Suns and New Orleans Pelicans. Magic Johnson last summer had two goals for this team. He wanted the defense improved and he wanted to get on run. 
Luke Walton accomplished those two goals. He's got a he's got a lot of fans within the Lakers organization organization. I think even failure to make the playoffs next season does not mean he's out. I don't think he's going anywhere. Exactly. And Luke Walton's a young coach and he's learning with our guys. And I think like you just said, he's proving that he's a really good coach. And I love Luke Walton. I don't think his job is in jeopardy at all. Unless, you know, something crazy, crazy happens next season and there's all this, you know, turmoil and, you know, bad chemistry and just fights and drama. But I highly, highly, highly doubt that's going to be the case. I think Luke is is going to stick around. Um, I guess what you could see happen, I don't know, but I'm just kind of, you know, playing around with some storylines. If we bring LeBron James and for some reason LeBron James doesn't mesh well with him, maybe he'll want another coach. But again, I'm just totally making things up. I think Luke Walton is... His job is totally fine. All right. So we tried to keep Paul George and LeBron James out of this yeah. show as much, as much as we possibly could. Um, I said we weren't going to have any like direct questions with them, but I guess I kind of lied because the last one does have them in there. But I just think this question's funny. So it comes from uh, – it looks like it's at Phillyist, which he has the, the tag Drunken Mamba. And maybe he was drunken when he wrote this. It says, if PG re-signs with OKC for another year, so he does like a one plus one or just picks up the final year on his deal, and that experiment fails again, would you still welcome him at the Lakers? So if he instead pushed his free agency back by one year and decided to try one more year in OKC, and then he came to the Lakers in 2019. He says, I want him in the purple and gold, but if he opts for another year at OKC, then I don't want him. Don't want our franchise to be treated like a rebound chick. <laughs> Sounds stupid. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but what's your take, Hannah? That is so funny. A rebound chick. You know, I don't think the Lakers are anyone's second choice, and they definitely should not be. Um, this is an interesting question, though. I mean, it's just all going to depend on if – all right, so if we don't get – PG this year if we don't get anyone this year then we look to you know maybe get him next year but then again there's other guys that are going to be available next year Kawhi Leonard's going to be available next year I think Jimmy Butler is going to be available next year yeah Clay Thompson so then you kind of look to these other guys and I don't know if Paul George you know we maybe we're maybe not going to give second chances you know you're not supposed to go back to your ex or if they don't pick you it's for a reason but I you know I don't know I would still be happy with Paul George coming to the Lakers next year but again I think I would rather have Kawhi Leonard or Clay Thompson or someone like that. If they're available, they may be, they may not be, but I would still be fine with Paul George coming back or coming to the Lakers next season. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like I, I mean, I get it. If a guy, guy turns down your franchise and, and everything and then, you know, do you let him come scurrying back or, or whatever? Sure. Like it's Paul George, right? I mean, this is a guy that you would want on your team. This is, um, it seems like he's a great fit. Obviously, he's the the hometown kid and, and all that kind of stuff. It, bottom line, it, even if something happens this summer and he winds up spending another season in OKC and then comes to the Lakers, I think all would be forgiven. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. And you know what? The first thing I thought of when I when I read this, it, Hannah, do you watch The Office or have you watched The Office? You know what? I don't. Everyone always tells me I need to because I would love it, but I have not watched it. Okay. Well, Office, you won't get what I'm saying here, but Office fans, fans will. All right. It's one of my favorite shows, but technically Jim is the rebound guy, right? For, for Pam. And look how that worked out. That was just fine, right? <laughs> I'm not too worried about whether or not the Lakers are a rebound chick or, or however he wants to say it. it. You get the talent however you can. And and if it's a season after you, you expected it to, hey, that's okay, right? I mean, it, it kind of works out that way. And I mean, look, the LA Galaxy, God's lot on. And he'd been rumored to come to them forever. He chose to go to Man U a few seasons ago instead of the, the Galaxy. And now he's here and he's doing some big things. So Things kind of work out how they're supposed to, and yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Paul George will get there maybe when uh, when it's the right time. We've waited this long for him, and we, we might as well just wait another year. Why not? <laughs> hey, there's more chance for the young guys to grow. Exactly. All right, Hannah, I think we're, we're out of questions here, which is, uh, which is probably a good thing. We're, we're pushing our time. Uh, thanks so much for coming on here, especially being your, your graduation weekend. I'm sure you've got tons of other things to do as you're, as you're uh, celebrating a, a massive accomplishment. 
No, of course. I would never want to celebrate my graduation any other way than come on the Lakers Nation podcast. And thank you guys all so much again just for your tweets. I've gotten so many amazing, really sweet uh, tweets just congratulating me. So thank you guys so much. I've tried to respond to all of yours, but there's there's been a lot. So I've tried to respond. But thank you guys so much. I've seen all of them. And also thank you guys for sending in such amazing questions. These were good questions. Thank you for not making it all about Paul George and LeBron James and saving me from, you know, having to crawl into a little hole. So it was a it was a good good question. So thank you guys. Yeah, you guys should definitely all go on Twitter, find at Hannah underscore Kulik, and make sure you tweet congratulations to her for graduating. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully you get a whole new swarm of uh, congratulations tweets now, Hannah. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for today, guys. Don't forget to go over to forhims.com slash Lakers and get your $5 one month trial. Uh, definitely worth it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Appreciate you guys sending in all the questions. We'll be back next Monday with another full length show. And of course, don't forget to check out the Lakers Nation news feed, which we put out uh, whenever there's breaking Lakers news. And we try to do a minimum of at least once, once a week. So make sure you check that out as well. And go to LakersNation.com for all your latest breaking Lakers news. Thanks for listening again. My name is Trevor Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Trevor underscore Lane. See ya.